Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk about Lamar and then move into Northwest. And I, we just finished the third game on a road swing and, uh, you know, successful. Went 3-0 and on it, which was good. Uh, we had some up and down moments, and I think Lamar was probably the same thing. You know, the first half we had kind of went back and forth, but we went into halftime with a lead. And in the second half, really played a lot better, uh, con controlled the clock. Probably had it for about uh, almost 20 minutes, I believe, of the 30 minutes in the second half, almost twice as much time of possession. So we were able to do some more things offensively, and we got off the field on defense. I think, it, you know, when you look at the, the way the game kind of played out, especially towards the end, defensively, we really stepped up. We got a sack, fumble, uh, we got an interception, and then we got a fourth down stop on the last three possessions that Lamar had. And that kind of sealed the game for us, you know, and I thought we did a good job from that standpoint. We ran the ball well again this week, uh, over 200 yards rushing. I was happy to see that. Uh, I thought our offensive line probably as a whole played the best game they played all year long. Uh, uh, they were on top of things. They, we got hats on hats. Uh, we had a couple of busts early, but uh, mostly on the perimeter. But I thought the first five, the five guys up front really did a good job from a protection standpoint and everything else. The quarterbacks had time to do what they needed to do. And, uh, you know, so it, uh, I was glad to see that, you know, our offensive line matured in the way that it did. Uh, like uh, Kemler mentioned, you know, Gage was Southland Conference Player of the Week, uh, special teams, uh, big return, got us a short field. We didn't, wasn't able to capitalize on it. We got, we got a field goal out of it. But, uh, you know, it just goes to show we got some guys out on the field that really care about special teams. Special teams is huge for us. Uh, we practice it. Uh, we work hard at it. I think uh, Ross Jenkins does a great job uh, scheming things up and getting guys to play hard. And our, all, our coaches coaching uh, the individual positions, I think we do a good job of that. And I think it's bared itself out over the course of, you know, a period of time that uh, uh, you know, we're, we're getting some advantages. We're getting some short fields and we're putting them on some long fields. We only punted once the other night and down that one inside the 20 yard line, you know, which was good for us as, uh, as well, you know, from Austin's standpoint. So. Uh, you know, I thought the Lamar game was pivotal, again, to go on the road and have to play on the road. And uh, for us to do that again and, and play as well as we did, especially the second half, uh, I was really happy to see that. Uh, this week, Northwestern comes to town. Uh, they're hot. They're, uh, it's a team that, you know, most of the staff, he replaced most of the staff, both coordinators. Uh, he replaced them, special teams guy replaced him. Uh, they, it was so early in the season, you, you saw – you, you, it's a completely different team. I think now they're starting to feel who they are on both offense and defense, and you're starting to see some players emerge. I think offensively, everything goes through their quarterback. Really good player. We recruited him here, uh, lost him up there to Northwestern, and he's doing a good job for them. Really good arm. Zach Claymore got a really good arm. He's athletic, uh, runs around good. Uh, they got then their two big receivers, one and ten. I think are just you know they're dominant players. They're gonna. They're going to make some plays. They'll be some big play guys, and they'll be they'll make some big plays against us. We just got to minimize it, you know. And uh, so we got to be able to do that. I think on defense, they play mostly uh, uh, four down personnel, but three down looks. They'll give us some four down looks also. Uh, their linebackers are active, and I think they're good in uh, secondary. You'll see a lot of man free from those guys. And uh, but they're a team that uh, they're first place in the conference right now. Everything's in front of them, same as us. It's such a big game. It's a big game because it's the one we're playing, but it's also because what we've done early in the year, same thing as Northwestern, what we've done throughout the course of the season put us in a position this late in the year to play these types of games, and that's the reason you come here. That's the reason why you hit Southeastern. That's the reason why these guys are practicing every day. That's the reason why you do all the work in the summertime and doing all the preparation so that you can get to this point in the course of a season where these games really mean as much as they do. And uh, everybody knows what it means for us to be able to play right now and uh, all the things that are at stake. So uh, we'll practice the same way, the same intensity. We'll do all the same things, our preparation, and uh, trust that what we're doing will give us the results that we need on Saturday. OK? So uh, with that, take any questions. You guys have been protecting the football pretty well all season. Well, yeah. outside the first two, but it's been some turnovers that plagued you guys in the last two games. Is there anything to point to that that's saying that on video about how to clean that up? Yeah, we had, we had two the other day, right? And uh, we got two and we gave up two. Seavers uh, was uh, the second play of the game, third play of the game, you know, throwing back across his body on a scramble situation that, you know, he knows better than to do that. And they shouldn't have done it. And then Byron was, didn't, uh, wasn't protected, you know, broke on a, I don't know, 15, 20 yard run and uh, was just had it, had it loose, 
he didn't have a tie and tight where he needs to have it. And then uh, guy guy did a nice job, put his helmet right on the ball and punched it out. So uh, no, I mean you know we we got to take care of the football. We all know that, and uh, you know I think we're we're plus I think it's six or plus seven right now in the turnover margin. So we're doing a good job of that, and uh, which I'm pleased with. Can you talk a little bit about Maurice Macy's uh, step up? Um, how he just performed really well, uh, stepping up at that spot. Yeah, Maurice, uh, you know, with Anthony Spurlock being down, Maurice is getting more reps now at the X, and he's really growing. He's coming. You can, you can see him evolving. He's our, you know, he engaged being our two go-to guys, and I think that's important, you know, for us to recognize the fact that you got to get guys out on the field, man. They can, they can win versus man, and then when they get the ball in their hands, they can do something with it. And I think you saw it again this week. You saw Maurice last week against uh, – uh, McNeese catch a ball and break a couple of tackles. You saw it again this week, him catching the ball and breaking some tackles and scoring and getting in the end zone. So, uh, you know, you, the, the evolution of watching him grow throughout the course of the season and then, uh, you know, being able to get as many reps as he's getting right now, he's just done a fantastic job. The rest of the offense has been playing great too, as well as only letting Austin Dunlap punt once. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, again, we don't want him on the field, right? You know, we scored – what did we score, 47 the other day? So, you know, he scored 47 points, and all of it was on offense. And, uh, you know, you go, well, I don't know if y'all played that well. Well, well we did. We scored 47 points. Uh, but we did have some fourth down situations, and we had a couple of turnovers. And, that, you know, you'd like to go ahead and score on those possessions too. But I think any time uh, we get Austin on the field, we got a chance. He's a weapon for us. So he's got a chance to do something like that, which he did. Last two years, you guys have been pass happy. You know, with Cole, it's kind of like been your your mo. How you move the ball, but this year got been a lot more balanced. How at running and throwing? How pivotal is that going to be for you guys down the stretch? Uh, and if you can make the playoffs, to kind of have that balance that y'all maybe been lacking the last couple of years. Well, I think Robbie, anytime you you want to be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, not have it been dictated by the opposition. That's basically what you want to do. So uh, we were much better throwing and catching than we have been, uh, you know, with Cole back there. We did a nice job of that. This year we've evolved. We're, we're doing a great job running the football. Uh, when we run more than we throw, we're six and zero. Oh. When we throw more than we run, we're zero and three. So it's just not it's not hard to see that. Now, two of those games were you know against FBS teams at the beginning of the season. That's two of those losses. And the other one was the commerce game. But when we're able to establish a run when we want to run, not when they dictate us to run, then uh, I think our guys get a lot of confidence and they know that right now. Plus, our running backs are good. You know, we got some guys who can make some things happen with the ball in their hands. Chris, does it get more difficult to think <clears throat> guys from looking ahead when you get to the end of the season and start looking ahead at conference and that, and especially with a quick turnaround coming up next week? Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell. I don't know. You know, you go to practice every day and you hope they stay focused and that's their job and we talk to them about it. And um, that we don't talk about the playoffs. We don't talk about short weeks. We don't talk about anything. We're going to – we wrap up Lamar and now we're going to talk about Northwestern. So, I, you know, we don't have a lot of conversations about that. We do bring it up and say here's – you know, the reason this is a huge game is because it's the one we're playing. And we do the same. We get the same message every week. It's just what makes this so big or, or under the spotlight more is because of what each team has done to get to this point and, you know, the ramifications of what happens if you win, what happens if you lose. you got a lot of guys that have been – I mean, you've been in this spot for basically three years now, you know, end of the year, playing for something meaningful, meaningful playoffs. You know, they have it. This is new charted territory for them. Do you feel like as a coach there's anything your guys can draw from past experiences that they may not be able to just because – this is their first time in a while being in this situation at the end of the year? You know, when you watch Northwestern, Robbie, it's every year. Uh, last couple of years, they beat UIW on the road. They beat a Sam Houston team a couple of years back. Went down to Thibodeau and won there. I mean, these guys go, for whatever reason, there's one or two games every year, man, that they just uh, they play really well in and they win. And uh, I'm hoping it was last week. Uh, it might not have been. It might be this week. I don't know. But uh, there's something, you know, there's something to that. So I, uh, they, they know how to win games too. Uh, you know, it's just, it's going to be, we know what this game's going to be about and how it's going to play itself out. And, you know, we got to take care of the football. We got to minimize our penalties and, uh, you know, go from there. But they're going to come in here ready to play. You guys think y'all played your best game of the year so far or do you think that's still out there for your team? It hadn't been complete, no. It had, you know, I think we really played well against Jacksonville State on both sides of the ball and special teams. Uh, it's probably our most complete game. 
Uh, but we've had some, you know, issues the last couple of weeks, offense, defense, special teams, everything like that, penalties, turnovers, you know. So you like to just minimize those things. Uh, uh, I, I just think we keep getting better. We got we plant so many young guys that we continue to grow. Like I mentioned earlier, our offensive line really played their best game this past week. So that was good to see, right? You got the upper trajectory of what these guys are doing, and you hope to see that across the board. You mentioned their quarterback being someone that you recruited. How big of a recruiting game is this, and do you have any people that are going to be visiting this week? Yeah, well, we got a good crowd coming in this week. Good uh, bunch of recruits, guys that we've offered, guys that are committed. Uh, looking forward to seeing them and uh, look everybody wants to play for a winner so that's what it's all about you know you bring them in here and you you run the risk of uh, not being not impressing them as much as you want to right uh, but that's uh, that's we, we believe in who we are and especially here in Strawberry Stadium they had an open day before commerce do you see anything that they kind of put in that open day that they used in this past game that maybe they hadn't been doing before that? Yeah, not particularly. You know, they they, uh, they pretty much who they are probably the last three weeks, uh, maybe a month. Again, when you have new coordinators and a new staff, everybody's feeling their way out. Everybody's learning the players, trying to figure out who's who. So, uh, you know, you, I, you kind of feel like everything's going to go through the quarterback. <clears throat> we know that. And, uh, you know, so when it comes down to what they're going to do, it's it, the ball's going to start with him. Everything's going to start with him, whether it be throw or pass, uh, run guys, I mean, none of their numbers offensively just jump off at you, but it seems like they're getting something done, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, are these receivers that you've talked about, are yeah. they their main weapon that you that maybe keeps you up at night a little bit? About yeah, one, one in ten. One in ten are very talented, both of them. Uh, it's two, two, one reminds me of Texas A&M Commerce's guy. Same build, length, uh, outstanding speed, great hands. Uh, ten's more shifty, a smaller guy, but uh, – Dynamic. He's got more catches right now, and uh, he's dynamic with the ball in his hand. So yeah, I mean, you got their running backs have great speed. Uh, Scooter Adams has been an All Conference player in this conference for a couple of years, and he's not even getting the bulk of the carries now. They got another guy doing that. So uh, yeah, they got some good skill uh, position guys on offense. You think you guys, your team obviously has been gone for you say three road games, but it's been four weeks. I mean. Yeah. Your team's got to be fired to be coming back here. And, and how pivotal is it to play this kind of a game and have it at home? Yeah, no, it's huge. You know, uh, and that's why it's so important for the student body and everybody else to pack this place on Saturday. Uh, the weather's going to be nice. It's going to be an afternoon game. Uh, you'll be able to do everything you want to do later on that night and, you know, tailgate in the morning. And for for us, to we got to have a home field advantage. It's important for the from that standpoint. And I think we will. I think the community will come out and support us because of what's at stake. Coach, talk a little bit about your uh, got 12 seniors that you're going to be honored before the game. Got a group with a lot of skin in the game. Just talk about what those guys, those 12 mentioned. Yeah, you know, you got to remember them. Uh, I think, uh, what, four winning seasons in a row now since 1979. Well, since football came back, that's never happened. So that's something that, uh, you know, they can be proud of. Uh, the opportunity for, you know, there's some, there's some guys in there that have been playing four and five years, you know, that have been here. And, uh, came in with the first class that I signed and uh, been with me the whole time. So it's, it's going to be, you know, be emotional for those guys and their families. And, uh, you know, and, you know, you always say you don't play with your teammates, you play for your teammates. And I know that, that the rest of our team is going to play for those guys because they want them to go out the right way. Real quickly, Coach, uh, how much you talk about the history of these in-state games with your team? I mean, Demons have been someone who's had some struggles against us lately, but – is, is that come up? Like, your kids know players that they had, they played high school with them and stuff like that. Does that come into play these, these games? It does. We're familiar with each other, right? And the recruiting trail, and then you play them. Uh, you're gonna, you know you're playing them every year. It's not like, uh, you know, somebody you get every four, five, six years. You're going to play these guys every year. A lot of them played against each other in high school. Uh, so I think that was something that, you know, that's something that always comes into play. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's every season's a completely different season. Doesn't matter what happened in the past. It really doesn't. These... You know, teams change over so much. There's so much uh, turnover on the uh, uh, rosters now that there's not there's not a lot of carryover. So it's uh, what we do now, not what we've done in the past. Thank you. Thank y'all.